Hello, and very happy to see you on our channel again. Today, we're bringing you a piece of breaking news from a royal expert. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's most outrageous trick did the Queen, and they failed. Queen Elizabeth was aware that Harry and Meghan wanted a different kind of working royal model, since Meghan was citing her unhappiness due to a lack of privacy, which is not truthful, and the intrusion of the paparazzi, which Meghan loves, but only when it suits her and serves her purposes. Meghan was unhappy. She wanted to be a pretty, pretty princess and wear pretty clothes, lovely jewels, and be the most important, most photographed, need the paps for that, member of the royal family. And yet, Harry was told by the Queen and Prince Charles to submit in writing exactly what kind of royal he and Meghan proposed to become. Harry felt stonewalled by courtiers who told him he needed a plan in writing. And maybe Harry's just bad at writing, but most people would have done exactly what his boss, the Queen, had requested. Put the plan in writing. And boy, did Meghan ever do that. She submitted her demands in that Instagram post on January 8th. Those demands were pub publicly posted to put the Queen on the defensive and place Harry and Meghan in the driver's seat. The Queen found out when the rest of the world did, when the post on Insta became public, that Harry was moving forward with his plan, which he still had not explained to anyone, nor submitted anything, thus the reason for never submitting it in written form, since it would never have been approved. Queen Elizabeth was given no advanced warning at all by her cold, calculating, and very rude grandson and his actress wife. Disrespectful much? Yes, it was. Suddenly, the Queen had to react to a very volatile situation. And by the time Queen Elizabeth was spending her night crafting a response to Meghan and Harry's post, Meghan was on a private plane escaping to live in Canada. Or so she wanted the world to believe. So the world did. Canadians embraced and welcomed the Duchess on the run. Harry was left to face his disappointed grandfather, grandmother, his upset father, Prince Charles, and a hurt and angry brother, Prince William. No one does this in the real world. Would you take to Instagram if you were the CFO of a company, telling the board of directors and the CEO, the queen's place in the firm, you are changing how you do your job and that now you're going to be working from home, which will be in North America, and you expect full pay and then some? No way. You'd be fired on the spot. Of course, Queen Elizabeth deserved better. That night, in response, she issued this statement. Discussions with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are at an early stage. We understand their desire to take a different approach, but these are complicated issues that will take time to work through. Harry and Meghan were deliberately deceitful. They hid their true plan, which was to move to Hollywood, which Harry couldn't handle after the pampering provided by the palace and aids for his whole life and make lots of cash by being Sussex royal. When the queen said no to their demands, Meghan pouted and told the queen not privately, not discreetly, but very publicly, saying the queen doesn't own the word royal, which in her case, she actually did. Meghan messed up big time in so many rude ways. Harry and Meghan should have used the proper channels. They should have been patient and waited, and they should have written down some plans. Of course, the plans they had in mind were meant to be kept secret from all the royals in Great Britain. But how could they lie on paper? Then it could have become a lawsuit, or at least that's what would Meg that's what Meghan was most worried about in her mind, her litigious mind. I believe this to be true. Meghan would sue an unknown photographer for taking pictures in a house in which she no longer lived if, oh wait, she actually did that. And baby Archie has his first lawsuit too. How nice. So Meghan was focused on not writing anything down, lest the Queen or Prince Charles or someone in the family would sue them. But Meghan doesn't understand how nice people work through problems and issues. She just doesn't get it at all. And her fans become more volatile by the day. Meghan fans the flames of discontent by calling a Twitter fan who writes about wanting to murder Prince William, Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, and their children. We're talking kids here. So that Meghan can be queen. That's messed up. How messed up are her followers? 
They're called the Sussex Square. I do not wish to write the full name on here, but you'll find it pretty quickly if you look. What I don't understand is why the Sussexes have so many volatile followers and admirers. Why? What I'm about to tell you next is the gospel truth, so believe it, please, I beg you. Harry and Meghan flew in a private plane from their mansion in Santa Barbara to Los Angeles because traffic was bad to hand out baby supplies for Baby to Baby, a charity for needy poor families. They showed up with a private photographer who took pictures of Harry and Meghan handing out baby items passed through car windows for 10 minutes. Harry and Meghan left after 10 minutes, according to Baby to Baby. The charity confirmed the couple stayed for 10 minutes and then left. The couple then flew back in 25 minutes via their private jet. This happened. They couldn't drive to the event because why? Give me a good reason. Why can't they save the cash and the fuel and drive like most anyone else? Why did they bring their own photographer? Why? Even celebrities who were handing out supplies were reportedly mortified and disgusted. Of course they were. One doesn't do charity just to come off looking good unless you're Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. This deceitful couple is out of bounds. They should be royals no longer. I don't understand the people who still love them. For what reason? How noble are Megs and Harry? How awful to try and work at a real charity for 10 lousy minutes after using a private plane to arrive there for 10 minutes. Do you see now why Megan's pleased to leave her first royal garden party after 15 minutes, as stated by eyewitnesses, is true, and it makes her look so cheap. Harry and Meghan did not tell the Queen. Queen Elizabeth, revered by world leaders and people around the world, was given no warning about the Instagram notice written to the world, which was completely truthful, not in their post, since what they wrote could never be implemented. How cruel do you have to be to do that to your boss, your grandmother, and a public figure who's revered so much more than you? Except for these obsessed followers, which I will never understand, they revere Meghan more highly than the Queen. They think Meghan is better, deserves better, and should be the next Queen. Go on Twitter. Read what's written about Meghan by her devotees, who are against those who choose to stand with the 94-year-old Queen, who wasn't told the truth and was wronged. She deserved notice. Queen Elizabeth should have known months in advance, weeks days, an evening, all of these would have been so much better. Queen Elizabeth deserved better. The whole royal family deserved better. And better now would be the ceasing of these followers with their hateful diatribe against private citizens the world over. We are hunted daily by them because we feel sorry for the queen who was given absolutely no grace, no notice of a post meant to ruin the monarchy. I stand with the queen and the royals who chose to stay after Harry's dramatic exit with his deceitful and dicey wife. They all deserved so much better. And so do those who love the queen and Prince William and Catherine. Another royal expert expressed this opinion. Should Meghan Markle drop her title if she wants to get involved in politics? Not only should she drop her title, she should divorce Harry, leave the royal family altogether, and then wait a respectable amount of time before getting involved in politics in any country, ever. Did she not get the memo about the requirement that royal family members are to be apolitical? If the British monarchy is to remain apolitical, then even as an alienated member in her own native country, she should not be commenting on America's or any other country's politics publicly, period. And she definitely shouldn't be using her title to promote her voting message, especially if it's partisan. Also, Meghan apparently neglected to give any forethought to how her political involvement might affect international relations with her husband's native country by angering the American incumbent. But obviously, she's not clever or diplomatic enough to consider these very real and very possible repercussions, which is sadly another monumental disservice to the monarchy and the British people. 
Even a neutral statement encouraging voting could be perceived as political. As a matter of principle, and as much as I might agree with her message, it is partisan and therefore highly political. And of course, as always, she overestimates her influence and the need for her involvement in all matters of public discourse. Newsflash, there are legions of more relevant American celebrities who can influence voters without Meghan's help. Of course, the irony here is that all the fame and wealth she's acquired is because of the monarchy, and now she's doing everything she can to destroy the very institution that gave her the global platform for her self-aggrandizing, all-important voice. Meghan needs to decide if she's a politician or part of the monarchy and behave accordingly. She can't have it both ways. How about you? Do you agree with these royal experts' points of view? Please let us know in the comment section below. And as always, subscribe to our channel for all the latest news on the royal family, Meghan Markle, and Prince Harry, right here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.